As organs go, I think that's an ugly organ. I honestly don't know why his wife's still with him. So now, while Glenn is popping off the deloo, I'm going to get myself a cup of tea. (laughs) (laughs) I'm all right. You're just going to sit there and hold it. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Well, I'm going to say to Hover that you nipped off really fast and came back. (laughs) No worries. I think, um, what can we talk about? Should we talk about Havard's organ? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's well, big, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> it feels a bit naked. <laughs> yeah, it's ugly, isn't it? As organs go, I think that's an ugly organ. Well, I don't get any strong feelings for it. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I honestly don't know why his wife's still with him, <laughs> having that organ in the house. <laughs> Maybe it it feels better to fiddle with it than it looks. Like. Like Maybe, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some things yeah. are better to touch than to look at. Yeah. And his organ might be one of them. Yeah, it's got some funny sticky outy bits, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, that, oh. that could be just, just a thing. Who knows? Yeah. I think maybe it uh, needs some treatment on it or something to uh, make it a bit uh, a bit more desirable. I don't know. I'm not, a, not an expert. <laughs> are you saying that he should lube up his organ? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a bit of hard wax oil on there. It's up nicely. (laughs) That sounds like a live stream. (laughs) Hey. All right. Let's see how many subscribers I lost this episode. (laughs) (laughs) I think you need to just uh, put some dollar signs on your... uh... Oh. Still there. No. Still there. Well done, mate. Yeah, I should. KJ's uh... added one or two extra as well, I think, since I last looked. Yeah. 348. That's two more than last time I looked. So that's nice. Nice. I wonder if that's from the Maker Central page, perhaps. Oh, maybe. Because I haven't done anything uh, other to... (laughs) to make anyone come. (laughs) <laughs> your dirty mind <laughs> we're just talking about organs <laughs> that's what I do that's what I do <laughs> I was thinking about that uh, shouldn't you make like uh, an acrylic top or something like that something to see through for the organ instead of putting the the wooden cap on so to say so you, act, so you can still see the moving parts inside yeah, that would be cool, but I mean that kind of size acrylic that's expensive. Yeah. And of course I could make uh, uh, just a small window or something, but yeah. I'm not gonna spend money on it. It's it's living there on borrowed time. Um I am thinking of using it in a video sometime and I don't think it's gonna survive that. That being said, I'm actually playing it sometimes, so it's uh it's actually getting use, which is nice. Where does the air come out of it? Uh, is it That's on the top uh... or back? Or... or can you see see where the air come out comes out in a nice way? That's why I'm asking. No. Um, it's in the back because the 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 back panel has like this mesh to let the air out. Okay. But, um... There's nothing interesting to see there. It's it's not anything opening or closing to show. Everything is uh, concealed between. Yeah. Everything. So. It's practical and boring. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's not made to be a show off uh, of the internals. So it's a. Uh, it's not like a grand piano where you can lift the lid and it's uh, like uh, glorious I mean, uh, metal and strings and. 
it's a shame it's not a little bit more showy and coming out the top of the air vent because you could have like little paper streamers that blow and flap around yeah. as you play it. That would be cool. The only thing it has, which is kind of cool, it has like this uh, vibrato function. And that is just you pull a lever and then there is this uh, spinning thing that actually makes the... It's like an old Leslie speaker, basically. But to govern the rotation, it has some paper flaps on it. So it's it's basically a paper propeller behind there. So when you pull that flap, it starts <laughs> rotating. That that looks kind of cool. But uh, <laughs> that's the only indication that something is happening. Oh, those old-timey solutions for that kind of thing, it's, it's really funny, I think. But when we were talking about acrylic, I, I, I just recently saw that um, the Norwegian maker actually got the laser that I was thinking of getting. And of course, I asked him if he's happy with it. And yeah, I was happy with it. Of course, it can always be bigger. But um, and one of the downsides, which I didn't realize, it, it doesn't cut clear acrylic. No. And then, huh, that's... Another thing I would like it to do, I think, or do I, or do I don't, well, I kind of see myself cutting acrylic with a laser, but if it doesn't do that, and uh, it's, you know. Is it as simple as just um, covering the acrylic in something? I thought the same thing. If you just uh, yeah. don't peel the, the frosted plastic on it, is that enough for it to work? I don't know. Yeah. Even just a bit of blue tape or something, I don't know either. Because once it's cutting, once it's actually cut into it, it's not clear anymore, is it? No. And I can't really understand why it should work. I mean, but then again, I could probably Google it, but yeah, who got time for that? <laughs> <clears throat> He's got that thing, um, he winds it up so it fits up to the ceiling, doesn't he? Yeah save space in the workshop that's ingenious i wish i could do the same but then i had to cut uh, through the concrete ceiling and then it would end up underneath our bed <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well that's a good place to store it yeah but there, there's already a lot of storage under there so <laughs> <laughs> there's no room for a laser <laughs> so kj when's the next video coming out for you and which one is it? Uh, Soon-ish. I'm almost ready with the edit. I'm starting to, to pick up speed in DaVinci Resolve now. So it feels it feels like I'm, I actually know what I'm doing until I want to do something that I don't know how to do. And then yeah. it's Googling and watching YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. uh, so soon. Uh, but now I have a podcast to edit. So yeah. not as soon as you would hope. No. I want to do DaVinci Resolve, I really do, but, you know, I'm on CapCut and I've got so familiar with it, it's so easy. I just, I don't know whether I could go through that whole learning curve again. I know I will have to. But then it's again, it's now it's the opportunity if we all are on the same software, then if someone realizes something smart, it's very easy to get uh, feedback or tips and yeah. tricks. Yeah. I've not... I've got to admit, I've not been overwhelmed with the support I've had off you two since we. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're on about, mate. <laughs> oh, what could you possibly mean? <laughs> KJ, anything to say? <laughs> so I asked KJ, I asked both of you actually, um, what about getting the podcast on Maker Central list? And Navar just did it outright. No, I'm not doing it. I can't do it. <laughs> KJ's like, yeah, I'll have a look. Leave it with me. And then last Friday, he proudly announces that he's got himself on the list and not the podcast. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> what I happened, read KJ? <laughs> I read that. that I, I, should, I will look into it how to get on it. And then <laughs> I found out that and felt, uh, well, I've, I've told Glenn all about it. My job is done. <laughs> But apparently, I had volunteered to do some kind of work as well. I don't. That doesn't sound like. That. <laughs> well, I mean, in the end, I mean, I don't know what you two were playing at. I I messaged them, and within an hour, we were on the the podcast was on their list. <laughs> yeah. Took you two weeks. What's going on? 
I think it took like two weeks for me <laughs> from actually getting a, a message from them and getting on the page. I think, oh, well, you were a bit I, quicker. I spent a month. So yeah, but you yeah, but you started in the medieval way of email. Yeah, but from when you actually send them the the stuff on Instagram and then to get on the page that went. And then of course when I send an email, I wait. I don't want to <laughs> to impose myself on people or be nagging. Yeah, so I'm I'm waiting the respectful amount of time and. And I'm thinking, oh, they probably haven't had time to read it yet. They're probably busy bees, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be nagging about it. And then, <laughs> of course, I, I got out of my shell and all right, I'll try a DM. Of course, referencing that email I sent and apologizing if there was something that I have done or technically or. <laughs> like that. How did you start out your DMs, both of you? I mean, I started out with, hello, lovely people at uh, Makers Central. <laughs> maybe that's why we got on there in an hour. <laughs> or yeah. maybe I just hit lucky and somebody was looking at the, the Instagram at that point. Yeah, probably. <laughs> what did I say? I just started with, who do I need to shag to get on the Makers list? <laughs> <laughs> no one. <laughs> Please, 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 no one. please don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could read my message more like more of a complaint that there wasn't a form on the website <laughs> to fill out like last year. So, <laughs> yeah, that no, might maybe. be it. <laughs> That's why I'm not the social media media manager overlord thing. <laughs> And that's why my my YouTube channel has the lowest number of subscribers of the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to the uh, going to the head of marketing uh, department, you did your video uh, of ours with the mistake, and you should have just put that mistake on the hell cord of the the wrong cut as a a design feature, not a mistake. But I mean, my channel is called Behind the Mistakes, so of course I oh, need to. True. I need to put some. You have to make in. one mistake every project. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's why you've not got not got up to four thousand subscribers. <laughs> not making enough mistakes, or yeah, yeah. yeah. Put put behind the design feature. See where that gets you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you just need more catastrophic uh, kind of failures. Yeah, and mistakes. More fire. Yeah. Yeah, more fire. I'll look into that after I made the children's book uh, YouTube video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i realized on my uh on my latest project this little um cigar box aren't you glad it's not called a four string anymore <laughs> well how many strings but, does it have three. Oh, <laughs> screw you about it. <laughs> it's only got three i'll, I'll find some innuendo just uh <laughs> let, me, let, let me think about it for a while <laughs> But I, you know, I said I'd um, I'd built this thing and then I'd learn to play it. And originally, I thought I'd do all that in one video. And then I started thinking, you know, I can build this thing. It's nearly done. It's not taken that long. But the playing part of it's going to take weeks and weeks and weeks. That's going to have to be a part two, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm really looking forward to that. We uh, we are due for a new uh, intro theme, so uh, I was kind of thinking <laughs> th this might be it. <laughs> I think that the, uh, at the end of the build video, you s you should shave your beard off and said, "I'm going to learn how to play this, and I'm not shaving until I'm done." That's, <laughs> That's a good scene. idea. <laughs> no, See what you look like. Idea. Or even better, you can recreate the dueling banjos with you and Steve. That would be a nice uh, finishing oh, touch to the video. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the outro. <laughs> of the... Part two, part two in five years' time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's optimistic. <laughs> well, it's good to plan ahead. <laughs> I realized when I saw the Swedish Maker's latest video that was exactly 20 minutes, zero seconds, how much I really liked seeing those numbers. So I was wondering if I should start making videos with really nice looking even numbers. Or maybe it's just me who really gets tickled about <laughs> that kind of thing. Yep. 
<laughs> because I'm yeah, I don't know why. I just I just enjoy even numbers. That, that is nice, and also the people who in the video referencing that specific time that they are in the video that uh, that is really neat. Yeah, like, how, uh, how much all right, if you, you if you're not interested in this, or if you know this, you can uh, jump to 17 minutes 32 seconds, and then uh, I'll continue. And then actually piecing that together and taking into account the time you need to say that. I mean, of course, there is some uh, probably someone pulling their hair in the editing, but uh, yeah. it turns out nice. You just have a lot of B-roll to jam in. <laughs> or just have yourself say, well, at 5 minutes 30 seconds, or at 7 minutes 20 seconds, <laughs> having a lot of takes to... Yeah. Yeah, that that's probably the easiest way to get around it. You actually... You just uh, ballpark a number and then you use a B-roll and uh, to actually adjust it to uh, match the timeline. <laughs> now I just... Uh, that just takes the magic it. out of it now. Now I'm not impressed <clears throat> anymore. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I mean, in the next video, I hope we'll have you say, well, if you jump to, and then you just end <laughs> your voice over with great. A very <laughs> metallic <laughs> voice or that uh, yeah. that lady's voice that every YouTube video is using is like a <laughs> really bad lip sync. Yeah. Over it. <laughs> I used to do that. What's the longest video you've ever made, KJ? It was the Christmas tree stand on like 11 minutes or something like that. Right. It, I, I tried really hard to stay under 10 minutes and then I stopped caring. Fair enough. Because no one cares about anything. No. <laughs> it's a true story. What's your longest one, Havard? Well, I was uh, trying to figure it out, but I don't see how I can sort it by time. I'm quite worried about the uh, the new full feature epic Hellcord video. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it done. <laughs> yeah. All right, videos. It's going to be its own supercut, isn't it? Advanced mode, that's the button you want. All right, content viewed by watch time, more metrics. Oh, God damn. I found the magic button, more metrics, and it just filled up the screen with. <laughs> All right, it's going to take a while. Uh, give me a day or two, and I uh, can probably have a number. <laughs> I think my longest video is around. I'm not sure if I passed 40 minutes, but I, I know I have several in the late 30s, at least. What's your first slow video? That Was, was that 45? Was it? Hmm. can't know. remember well, <clears throat> why am I sitting looking at statistics I don't have that many videos I can just scroll down and see <laughs> <laughs> I'm fascinated by this extra button you found with more stats on yeah yeah, yeah. Admit it. Oh, <laughs> I'm lying 54 minutes and 3 seconds is my longest video and it's the helicopter assembly it's the, it's the slow one where I'm rambling <laughs> the on. first slow yeah. one yeah because I mean, a hundred percent, nobody disliked that video. So it's it's all positive. How many <laughs> likes did it get? The forty likes. Oh, that's good. And yeah, it yeah. has four hundred and twenty-seven views. And I see I average about ten percent plus likes uh, compared to the the views numbers. So. I, th I think that's good. I mean, yeah, if, if yeah, definitely, if like ten percent actually, this this is good. Pressing like that, that's good. I think I've had about forty odd likes on my latest one, and that's had just over two thousand views. So you know, that's a good percentage you got there. But of course, now I'm yeah. going to start to do like KG does. I'm just going to add uh, a few seconds of dead space at the end of the video just to. Uh, get an even number <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like to have something to, i mean you should i don't really i nope 
Yeah, I'm going to bring it back. I hate videos who end too abruptly. <laughs> and mostly because I, when I watch the video, I I, I like to like the, like the video as a way to say thank you for the video, but also a reminder for myself that I've seen the video. And if it just jumps to the next one, then I have to go back and, and click it again to actually <laughs> like it. And yeah, that's it's a whole whole thing. So I, I like when it have some kind of outro. So you have time to yeah. time to end it. It's, it's ideal when they end it with an advert, I think. Yeah, because then you know it. <laughs> yeah. Or, or uh, like uh, uh, I like to make stuff with bloopers that I hate to watch. So then I can just, <laughs> okay, like, wait, what? I want to see this. Same thing as the ads at the end. Who's your favorite creator, KJ? Favorite YouTube maker? Uh, it must be Simone Jatch. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she's nice. If I have, if I have to pick only one, that's 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 her. <laughs> right. That's not a bad choice. I think I'd probably take Laura over Simone, but I like them both. Yeah, it's a it's close, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm Team Simone. <laughs> <laughs> if that's a thing, you can be. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure she'd take it. <laughs> I end up um, watching all sorts of things, but I don't. I don't watch as much maker content anymore. I watch a lot of radio control car stuff for some reason. I don't know why it fascinates me. <laughs> I've got one. <laughs> Are you re- reverting to childhood? <laughs> I think I am. Yeah, I think that's what happens as people get older, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you were that close to no. that age, but apparently, <laughs> what was it? Retirement was seven years off. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I actually had the same thought today. I was reading for the oldest, and uh, uh, one of the characters in the book, uh, they were making a log raft. And I never got around to do that when I was a kid. And a few years ago, uh, us and some friends went to Sweden paddling canoe. And then there's a company who actually, you can go there and you can build your own log raft and then you can sail it down the river for a few days and then they pick you up and you just put it on a truck and reset everything and that got me thinking all right i'm gonna give it a year or two until the kids are a bit bigger but then we're building a log raft i always wanted to do that so that's gonna happen in my life yeah that's really really fun we did that when i was a kid they don't float that well though Although well, that depends on the wood, I guess. But yeah, yeah. And so if I if I get the logs now and dry them good, yeah, <laughs> it's good if they're dry. Then I can drill them out and fill them with uh, this uh, expansive uh, expansive expansion <laughs> foam thing. And... I got excited when you first started talking about that and the company that did it. I thought you were going to invite the two of us to come along and build a raft with you and sail down the river. <laughs> that sounds like a hoot. Let's do that. Yeah, that's actually a brilliant <laughs> idea. Yeah. Three opinionated makers all building <laughs> the same you? thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going to end up being a three route. Three yeah, route. definitely. I can do this better than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to end up I, being I just... a competition. Three rafts, yeah. yeah. And then we'll I, fight, fight the rafts all the way down the river. Yeah. <laughs> I just envision me, me and Glenn being at one opposite ends, not talking to each other, and over <laughs> in it and trying to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> keep the peace. <laughs> well, I'm uh, I'm the chaos captain, so I'm just going to sit in the middle drinking <laughs> gin and tonic and uh, putting fuel on the fire. <laughs> 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 on the on the couple of times when there's been a podcast disagreement, you do generally just keep quiet. Yeah. <laughs> He's smart in that yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. all... I just let things work work things out for themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, things usually sort themselves out. So why don't I do. uh, just stay out of it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I got real. Uh slapped around by greenery this weekend as well because uh, to get the kids out of the house uh, I pulled out the power washer uh, and for that I had to turn on the water and uh, when we got that going uh, 
there was a fountain out of the wall because one of the fittings <laughs> broke loose and and sadly the the tap is more or less inside a rose bush <laughs> because the people who owned this house before us thought that this was a good place to have a rose uh, and i mean it's uh, it's a uh, it's a, I mean, it's a really good place for something to grow because every drip of water that yeah. gets lost that goes directly to the that plant and uh, and yeah. So I was just standing there trying to make the fittings fit again because it was a uh, one of those brass uh, things for the hose who was who got loose from a plastic thing to keep the pressure a bit down because it's it's not fun when when the pressure is so high that it kills the hoses, uh, <laughs> because that's how it is where we live. Uh, it's not, not on their problem anywhere I work. <laughs> the <house laughs> pressures are always down. <laughs> yeah, because and I realized it was it had the brass thing had eaten off a couple of uh, a, a bit of the the plastic one, so I had to take it in and and cut it off on the bandsaw and just file it off. So I actually got some some threads to to get a hold of, but then trying to install that. Whilst in a rose bush and that whipping it, whipping me over the face. <laughs> so now I have a bit of a, uh, a scar there, and I think I I woke up probably oh, no woke up. It was in the middle of the day, but I screamed so loud that most of the neighborhood heard it. I think <laughs> cursing a rose bush that felt felt really adult of me in front of my kids as well. <laughs> We've actually planted a rose right next to our outdoor outdoor tap as well in the back garden. Yeah, yeah, it's just the it's, right it's, place. It's good if you want it concealed, but it's really bad if you want to yeah. use the tap. I hate roses. I mean, <laughs> they're not that nice, and they are, for all practical purposes, they are weed. They grow like weed, they spread like weed, and they sting, <laughs> and they're a motherfucker. And then it's that half day when they are blossoming. All right, some decent colors in your flower bed, but then it's just uh, the sting of death after that again. So yeah. it's, I, I don't, I don't get it. And they're expensive as well. Leaves and petals as well, yeah. all over. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you there, but, but sadly. And then you have all the garden people. It's like, oh, roses this, roses that, and then of course the commercial, <laughs> and the movie industry is driving this. It's like the diamonds all over again. I mean, be creative, do something yeah, else. Yeah. I mean, there are other flowers out there that actually smell nice and don't sting you, and look more interesting <laughs> as well. Yeah, that as well. Yeah, roses aren't known for their fine fragrance, are they? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I think you've got... I mean, the same way I wake up and smell the roses, but God damn it, that's so oversold <laughs> that I can't even start. I think you must have a very limited experience with roses, Havard, if you think they don't smell nice. Well, it might be limited, but it's more week. than enough, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to go into this argument with you. <laughs> Captain Chaos is just trying to <laughs> start something off here. I think. <laughs> and don't yeah, get me yeah, started it's... on tulips. Oh, they're a waste of time. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Plants in Good general. Good old daffodils. Well, yeah, I'm now. Do you, a, um... do you have a plant that you do like? You like your red aces, don't you? Yeah, those are beautiful. <laughs> Only the red aces. And then now I'm going to get like, I, I think I ordered like a thousand kilo, like the big bag of salt after you uh, recommended using salt yeah. in your garden. <laughs> right. So that's a, I'm yeah. doing that this year. How are you salting the earth? And... <laughs> yeah, yeah, of <laughs> so course. Nothing just, grows. <laughs> I was going to say, just to be clear, it's a good weed killer. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it's good for the garden. <laughs> I, I think. I mean, yes, we have a couple of stumps uh, or plants we want to kill, but I think the the best use is we have a gravel uh, driveway. So actually using that to keep the grass from coming up so you don't have to go and shift the yeah. gravel and so on, that, that would be nice. But it got me thinking, if I use a lot of salt around, because we we have removed all vegetation around the like the foundation of the house. We have like a barrier 
uh, where we filled the 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 beds of rock uh, just to not have anything growing up to the concrete wall drawing moisture and so in and of course you get leaves and shit collecting between the rocks and at some point you have weeds popping up and i thought well i could just sprinkle some salt in there and that will make it but this is all concrete it's the same in our garage and houses built in the 60s uh, you see when you are driving your car in the winter time when they are salting the road and you get this salty snow collecting on the car and then it starts dripping on your garage floor and it actually eats away the concrete Really, And of course, modern concrete doesn't do that, especially the ones that they use in like uh, in garage floors and so on. But I'm not sure how the concrete on our walls will stand up to me salting. I mean, it's, I'm, you're probably going to have to do a lot of salting, but I, I tend to go overboard <laughs> when it comes to weed killing. So... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you'd have to put a heck of a lot on there for it to start damaging the concrete. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like KJ said in the uh, main episode, you know, every every mistake and whatnot, you know, you can turn into content. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lifting your house because you need a new foundation <laughs> because your it's gardener so friend said you salt on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to send him some roses in the mail. (laughs) (laughs) Film it over the next 50 years. (laughs) Detrimental effects. (laughs) Don't like roses. God. They are overrated. That's what they saw. Yeah. <laughs> Are there a lot of roses in the gardens you take care of? Oh yeah, yeah, heck of a lot. Yeah, so some some of the gardens even have dedicated rose beds. You know, I I see now that I might have glorified your line of work too much. I, I kind of <laughs> I, I feel myself pivoting away from it now. Of course, uh, it sounds nice being outside using your body, but I realize that of course all the the gardening people out there, of course, they have roses. The peasants. Oh, <laughs> How do roses sting you, by the way? I mean, it's not a nettle. How do they sting you? Well, yeah, there's the spiky things on the stem, and then, of course, they're. Oh, every, and they sting you, do they? Every time but you have to go in and turn your uh, garden hose on or something, of course, they sting <laughs> you because for some reason. Everybody who has a house and plants roses, they plant one directly underneath where you connect your garden hose. <laughs> Don't know why, but that's the thing, obviously. I mean, I, I got stung. It, it was just under the nail on the thumb. Oh, that's uh, nice. <laughs> yeah. and, and apparently, I used the left side of my right-hand thumb for a lot of things because yeah. that thing uh yeah it's not been really 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 fun yeah but... Thorn, thorns in the fingers is uh painful for a couple of days it's, uh, it's a bit of a hazard yeah. <laughs> my job not just from roses all the plants have thorns too but not many plants sting you i think there's just something mixed up in translation there yeah it might be mm. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 one thing that made the gardening a lot easier was when I realized that there's such a thing as rose gloves. Gloves that are <laughs> thick enough that you can actually handle roses. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you cut them down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even, even better uh, than the gloves, I also realized that there is this tool where you can have different kinds of attachment on the edge of a, a relatively long pole, and then you have an engine at the end, so you don't have to like bend down on your knees and like pruning them and so on. You can just uh, like <laughs> instead of using several days uh, pruning the roses and so on, you can just like and they're gone, and then dump just dump, the dump a lot of salt right. on it, and voila. <laughs> Cut it down, season it well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Recipe for a happy Havard. 
And the, the fun the fun thing is we have a few plants that we we keep them outside in the summer. Um, some of them out in the open, and some of them out in like the gardening, like the 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 patio thing about Bob. What's it called in English? I don't know. Patio. Uh, no, it's like outside. It's it's not a greenhouse, but it's like a place where you can sit. It's like a small garden, room? garden house, garden, yeah, garden room, some something like that, yeah. And we have some Gazebo. some plants in there, and of course, in the winter time, so they don't freeze, we move them back into the house. And of course, during the summer, you have all kinds of uh, beetles and so on uh, actually living in the pot. And then, of course, when they get in and it's too hot, then they start climbing out. Uh, <laughs> and then we spend a couple of weeks just uh, picking various beetles so that it's uh, exploring our <laughs> living room, <laughs> trying to figure out what the hell happened. And then we just uh, gently guide them outside again. So your way of extending summer in Norway. Yeah. <laughs> Bring the outdoors in. <laughs> it's, it's more like bringing the indoor outside, but yeah, um, we have reached a threshold that I, I'm I'm not allowed to buy any more plants unless I uh, get rid of some of them. So uh, because we, we don't have enough room, because they tend to grow, right. they tend to grow and they become bigger and then uh, yeah. They... Are we talking house plants or plants for the garden now? Or... Well, this is uh, house plants. Yeah. Uh, okay. But some of them can manage being outdoor in the summertime. So from like yeah. late May until September, they are outside decorating the yeah. garden. Nice. Uh, the problem is I bought, I think it was on sale, um, like this huge planter. And then I filled it up. Uh, I just, uh, I think it was the... Uh, yeah, the biggest maple, uh, blood maple plant I had. And I put it in there and uh, put in a lot of soil. And it became too heavy to lift. <laughs> so <laughs> whenever we move it, me and my wife both have to wrangle it on like a trolley and then move it. And then, of course, getting it inside yeah. in the winter time is like uh, trying to haul that up a stair. It's a accident and a, a thrown out back waiting to happen. <laughs> you have to bring the maples inside, do you, in Norway? Um, no. And yes, if you have them in a, in a pot uh, or a planter, then you have to, because it freezes solid. But if you put it into uh, the ground, there is no problem, but you might right. want to cover them up while they are young yeah. with some. Can you, not wrap, can you not just wrap the pots with bubble wrap or something? That's what we do here with uh, certain tender plants. Yeah. I'm, not maples. I, they're fine I don't here. think Probably that would could. be enough. Yeah. But it, that would be gambling, I think. But now I have heating cables, so but I'm going to use that in the table. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> move the table outside, put the Acer on top. Ah, oh, brilliant! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Might be expensive, but yeah. talk about bovril in the next episode <laughs> bog rolls <laughs> why bog are rolls, british people yeah. eating bog rolls 